Uh, Doc, first of all, I've seen you talk lately, recently. I was doing my research about you to make sure you're legit. Uh, you were talking about uh, hemoglobin A1C measurements and plant sterols and the effect that, that eating some plants, at least some of the time, can have on the health and viability of uh, erythrocytes, red blood cells, and how that can affect hemoglobin A1C measurements. Uh, and I've actually, about in about 5% of the carnivores in our community, we see that they get this falsely elevated A1C. Of, in the United States, of 5.6 or lower is considered completely normal. Uh, but we'll see carnivores get a 5.7, 5.8, and they've been strict carnivore for six months or 12 months. And so we know that that's not coming from glycation events, coming from their diet. There must be some other cause. Well, first of all, let's have a think about what HbA1c is. Yes. So you've got a red blood cell and it's swimming along in a soup. And when we talk about blood glucose, when you do the finger prick and you say, oh, there's glucose in my blood, you're physically talking about glucose molecules that are swimming along in this soup. So these red blood cells also in your blood they're in contact with the glucose. Now, these glucose molecules can actually non-enzymatically, which means it's just a passive process, can attach together. And when the glucose attaches to the, to the red blood cell, we call that glycated. We call that HbA1c, glycated hemoglobin. Now, the more sugar that attaches, the bigger the number. So there's two factors that can actually increase the HbA1c. So factor number one is how much sugar is there? So that's why people with diabetes have greater HbA1c is because this soup, it's, it's a thick, viscous soup of sugar. It might as well be honey for blood. But number two, the duration of exposure. So if that those red blood cells are in that soup for longer, then there's going to be naturally more time for things to attach. And that's what happens in carnivores. You see, we talk about red blood cells like they've got a life of 120 days, but not in everybody. Some people's red blood cells just aren't that healthy. They don't live as long. They, they suffer more oxidation stress. They're not as resilient. They're not as deformable. The myriad of reasons why, but they're, if their red blood cells are not lasting for very long, then what will actually happen is you'll get an artificially low HbA1c reading. So people who are sick, I'll often see people with an HbA1c of 4.5 or something like that, and I'm just saying, uh-uh, that's not real. You, there's, we've got to look at a reason why are your red blood cells turning over excessively. But on carnivores, they put their body into a physiological state where the red blood cells can actually live for longer. Their survivability is improved. And in that situation, what actually happens is that because they're in contact with the sugar for longer, they're able to actually have an elevated HbA1c. And fortunately, there is a way we can actually assess for this in the blood. So we've got a, when we do a full blood count, we get hemoglobin, you know, red cell counts on and so forth. And we can also get, although we don't always ask for it, something called reticulocytes. Now, a reticulocyte is a new red blood cell. Now, I'd call it a baby red blood cell, but they're actually bigger. Yep. So we'll go with a new red blood cell. And the idea is that if you're in a steady state, if, you're, if your red cell count is stable between two blood tests, then the rate of red sub blood cell production should be a pretty good surrogate marker, a proxy marker for the rate of red blood cell destruction or turnover. So what we can actually see is that in carnivores, their blood cell now amount is staying stable, their reticulocyte, their new red blood cells are going down, and at the same time, their HbA1c is going up. So that gives us an insight that the increased HbA1c is actually a consequence of improved red blood cell survivability.